Hey robot makers, do you want to make an absolutely minute robot just like this one? Well keep watching. So the parts you'll need for this project, you'll need a time of flight sensor which is the VL53L0X uh, and that's a laser rangefinder. Then there's the MX1508 pulse width modulation motor driver. It's a really small motor driver, just ideal for this kind of board. Then we have the Tiny2040, which is from Pi Moroni, and that's a really small Raspberry Pi Pico compatible chip. And then finally, we have the two N20 motors, which are gonna power this. So let's have a quick look at the Pi Moroni 2040. So you can see there, it's not got as many pins as the Raspberry Pi Pico, uh, but it's got just enough for what we need. There's a five volt, there's a ground and a three volt. We're gonna make use of the three volt and the ground. And then there's a couple of pins down the left-hand side there that are marked SCL and SDA, and that's the I squared C bus. And we're going to use that for the laser range finder. And on the right-hand side, we have all the digital pins, and that's what we're going to use to control the motors. So this is what it looks like to wire it up. We can see there we've got the laser rangefinder with the four pins, which is the I squared C bus going into the bottom two and going into the three volt on the ground. And then on the right hand side of the tiny, you can see there we've got pins zero, one, two, and three going into IN1, IN2, IN3, and IN4, which is the motor drivers. And then the motor driver then goes to motor A and motor B. And that's quite simple to set up. So when I originally made this project, I said the backpack was to be designed. So what I've actually done is created it in Fusion 360. Uh, and this is what it looks like. It's a very small little backpack uh, that contains our tiny 2040. So it just slides on just like the front slides on onto our modular design. We created the code for this project quite a while ago when I originally launched the Smiles Mini. And the difference now is that we can actually get this working on this robot and actually see it run. So I've made a few changes to the code. I've changed the pinouts for the I squared C that's now on pins 26 and 27 and the ID is now one. And that's because that's how it works on the Pico. And then over here in the Smiles module, I've just changed the order of the pin sequences so the way that I've soldered this up I've got the IN from the motor driver going to pin 3 on the tiny IN2 is going to pin number 2 IN3 is going to pin number 0 and IN4 is going to pin number 1 and that just depends how you wire it up yourself the rest of the code is exactly the same and this Mars class enables us to bring together all the different pieces of code such as the motor driver code as well as the laser range finder code and put it all into one simple class that we can then use in a demo program so the demo program that I created was called Pico Smiles and this actually now works. We've got uh, the avoid program. There's a while true loop. It will say I am working and then it will check to see is the distance in front of the robot using the laser range finder greater than five centimeters. Uh, if so, move the robot forward and print the word forward to the console. Otherwise move backwards and then turn right. So it has a back out and then turn right movement. And that's simply what the avoid code does. So let's load that up onto the robot. I'm also going to copy this exact code and call it main.py and then upload this to the robot. So if you look at the robot, if I just hold it still here, you can see there that the wheels are turning forwards and the console says that it's, it's moving forward. And if I cover up the sensor, we can see there that the, the direction has changed to backwards. The 2.8, 2.9 is the how many millimeters away my thumb is from the thing. So if I move my thumb a bit further away, you can see there it's eight, seven, six, five, four, and so on. And when it gets less than five, we can see the wheels turn direction and it will also do the right turn. So if I just bring this a bit closer so you can actually see the direction the wheel spinning. If I bring my hand there, you'll see that it'll back up. And if I turn it over to the other side, you'll see that it turns direction twice as it goes backwards and then it goes forwards to do the, the turn right maneuver. So as you can see there, I've currently got it powered by my bench power supply. So I've got five volts going into the motors and we've also got the cable coming from the computer to connect to the Pico. It will run if I disconnect the cable and I power the Pico just from five volts. But currently we have nowhere to store the battery on the robot. So currently the way that I'm thinking about powering the robot is either using some coin cell batteries like these ones or possibly buy a 14250. But my preferred option is to use a LiPo rechargeable battery. I do have this one, but it's a bit too fat for the robot. I'm quite pleased how this project's going so far. It's a work in progress, but I am enjoying putting all these bits together. Have you printed out a Smiles Mini yet? I know some people in the community have taken this and run with it. I've seen a Smiles Mini XL and I've seen some other variants as well. So as you can see, the Smiles Mini is quite a lot smaller than the original Smiles. In fact, it even fits inside the bucket of that one.
So if you want to print out your own Smiles Mini, just head over to smilesfan.com and you can then click on the Smiles Mini tab there. And you'll find there all the STL files, all the electronic parts that you need. There's some modules as well, such as the scoop, and then there's the links to the videos. And I'll put a link on there to the code as well. So I hope you enjoyed this video and you print out your own Smiles Mini soon, and I'll see you next time.